Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome back to another live on Thursday evening, 7 p.m. And my name is Aditya Soma. If you're new to this channel, on this channel, I talk about you know how to achieve financial freedom through real estate investing, and I share a lot of stories, um, you know, my personal journey, and also other investor stories, um, other successful stories uh, on the financial freedom side and the hustle side. Um, if you're interested in those topics, you know, you know, you're on the right channel. And I do these lives every every Thursday evening just to you know. Um, to answer any questions you have related to real estate. So today's topic is, you know, um, we have a lot of deals in the pipeline. Right now, you know, many people have been asking me, oh, can I find a property, buy a house hack, live in one unit? Uh, can the, How much rent can I get from the other unit? Um, you know, can I buy a property under 500,000? Can I buy a property for 300,000? Can I buy a property for 500,000? this and that uh, can i would like to buy multifamilies what kind of multifamily deals available in windsor so today we're going to dig more into because we have a lot of properties that are coming up and um, already a bunch of properties we have on the market that i feel are great investment properties um and some of them are great starter homes so stick till end and make sure you know you watch um all this and if you're not able to watch full the videos, but you know you you are looking for uh, any opportunities in Windsor. Just DM me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is the same Aditya Kumar Soma. Uh, now I got the blue tick. I see that a lot of people send me a DM this mm, couple of days ago, saying a lot of fake profiles. So please be careful with those fake fake profiles. I never do any uh, crypto trading or anything. I never charge money for those kind of things i never do those so just be careful about those um so yeah jumping into the topic let me share my screen here um hey imran how are you hey Sairam, hi hi how are you so yeah let's get into the properties here let's check out some properties and let's do some analysis you know i'll be Again, interrupt me. Any questions you have, don't hesitate to ask. Um, pretty much this live is for you. Uh, just to, you know, make sure, answer any questions you have. See, you know, if I can be part of your journey, help you to make some decisions. That is what my goal out of this reels, out of this, you know, lives. Okay, so let me get into the share. One second, share the screen. Entire screen, there we go. Okay, awesome. So hope you can see my screen. Yes, I know now you will see all of us, all the comments, but now you're back onto the topics. So I made some list of properties here that are especially good for investments. So let's start off with a duplex. You know, a lot of people ask me, how did I start it? Uh, personally, I started with buying a duplex, living in one unit, rented out the other unit, paid most of my expenses. Because, you know, that's one of the great way to build wealth. Because one, it's an investment property, but because you're buying it as a primary home, you can buy for 5% down, as low as 5% off. If it's two units or a single family priced under 500,000, if you qualify for the mortgage, you can buy it for 5% down. So 5% of 500,000, 25,000 plus closing cost, another 5,000. So all you need is 30,000 and qualify for a, a 500,000 mortgage. So this property fits in that exact same budget. And, and this property is actually right four houses down the road where my first house is. So 689 and 87, 75 Cataraki. And this is a duplex property. So it's in two legal units and it's a side-by-side -side property currently listed for 389. And of course, you know, I put here seller expectations because, you know, I know many people will be asking me, Oh, it's just a listing price. 
but because these are uh, my listings and sellers gave me permission to share what they're expecting so i'm sharing and um, let's go a little deeper into this property so i have the listing open up as well and again any of these properties if you want to get more details just dm me on instagram if you have the address now you can text me the address or you just say you know send me deals um we'll put you in our database and we'll send you all the info for each property whichever that you're interested in okay so let's talk about this one the first one um this one again like i said it's listed for 389 and this is the address so this property is located in a central location which is very popular for rentals so a lot of tenants live in this area if you see here this is like literally the border of walkerville my first house was right here this is the property right here is my first house and this is right here so i lived in this area i rented out my property in this area so a lot of immigrants a lot of uh, you know new immigrants like you know who are coming uh, refugees um, or even students because the bus from Wyandot Street here goes directly to university and goes to college, St. Louis College downtown. So location for renters, great. Um, always renters are always there. And this one is, like I said, legal duplex. And the property taxes are under $1,700, so which is like under $150. So this one is a five bedroom, two bathroom property, which means it's a side by side. One side is three bedroom unit. The other side is two bedroom unit. And it's a nice and decent. It's not like, you know, modern. Of course, you know, you get what you pay for 450,000. What can you get, right? Like it's, it's neat, nice and decent and livable. So this one has two parkings in the front. It's a uh, right here. The garage is not part of this house. It's a neighbor house. Just this parking here, you have two parkings. And um, brick property from top to bottom, except this part is vinyl. So brick is painted white. Roof is fairly decent condition. Again, nice big living area. Nice and clean, not completely modern updates. You can do some improvements over the period. For now, you can rent it as is for at least 1800, 1900, because it's a semi-detached three bedroom house and good size kitchen, nice, clean, nothing fancy, new light fixtures, freshly painted, ensuite laundry. You have the laundry within the unit, good size kitchen, decent size dining, and you have four, three bedroom and one bathroom. And again, bathroom, nice and decent decent sized bedrooms clean flooring and this one runs on a gas heating and it has separate hydro and gas meters so you know you don't have to pay for any heating bills or any hydro bills um and this is the second bedroom unit two bedroom unit newer cabinets decent condition again freshly painted new light fixtures ensuite laundry clean washroom nice and decent bedrooms pretty much that's it so this property if you're renting it if you're buying it as a you know first time home buyer you're living in one unit you can rent out the other unit for 1800 you live in the two bedroom or if you're living in the three bedroom you rent out the two bedroom for 1600 and if you punch in the numbers here like i said seller expectations on this one is 450 so 450 five percent down this is how much you need down payment plus closing cost your monthly payment is 2500 so if you're renting the two bedroom pretty much your half more than half your mortgage is taken out by your tenant so pretty much your monthly cost is this thousand dollars plus any of your utilities your property taxes um and any other expenses like maintenance this and that so approximately your cost is like 1500 to 2000 dollars so instead of paying all um 3500 from your pocket you're paying pretty much like you know 2000 dollars all in which in my opinion better than renting so you know this is another question like you know okay is it better than renting 
screen is blurry. Oh, how about now? Can you can you see my screen now? Is it better? Thumbs up, yes or no? Can you see my screen? Give me a thumbs up. Can you see my screen? Yes or no? I see a couple of people texted saying, oh, looks good, okay. Perfect, yes, I can see, sounds good. So 2,500 is your monthly payment and other expenses like insurance, 150, property tax, 150, lawn maintenance, grass cutting, another 200, property maintenance, another 200, so 700, utilities, another 300. So you're all in thousand dollars. So that means you, your monthly cost is 3,500. And if you, you know, eventually buy another home, move into that home, now you, your monthly cost is $3,000, 3,500 with 5% down. Most likely this property can rent for 3,500, 1,600 on one, 1,900 the other one, or 1,700 on one, 1,800 the other one. Or even if it's hundred dollars less, you're paying 5% down and you're pretty much breaking even. Whereas if you're putting 20% down, you can go for 25 amortization to 30 years amortization because I always go for a higher amortization when I put 20% down because you have an option and now your monthly payment come down to less than $2,000. So that means you have a $500 cash flow because just what we discussed, your expenses are $1,000 plus mortgage $2,000. So $3,000 is your um, income uh, sorry, $3,000 are your expenses and um, $3,400 or $500 is your income. So you have right away has these four to $500 positive cash flow with this interest rates. So if you lock up your rate for next three years, you don't have to worry about it. And you can modify this. If you're changing the rates, you always make the change, put 5.75, see how much difference would it make. Because, you know, here is where a lot of people fear about interest rates. It's not that fearful if you are buying the right property. Look, now your mortgage rate went up by $100. That means your cash flow down by $100. You're still positive cash flow. Does this make sense? <coughs> Excuse me. Today, a little bit sick. My head is... Uh, not not functioning properly because i was all day golfing today i don't know if you guys see my stories i i golfed today for the first time because it was a real three event and a good cause charity cause so it was it was a lot of fun and i learned golfing and i got some good shots so back to the deal um it has it's a positive cash flow property as is and perfect house hacking or per perfect investment and now coming on to, we have another property. This is a duplex with in-law suite and 3712 Mill Street. This is also a great property that is like located literally few minutes walk from the university. So I'm gonna open up the screen here. Here is the university, here is the property. You can literally just walk by it walking distance from university. This whole area you're seeing here, opposite side of the bridge is university area. So this one is comes with like pretty huge property. On the second floor, uh, three bedroom, one bathroom, beautifully renovated, already rented for $2,000 plus utilities. And the main floor was rented for $2,000 and um, the owner decided to sell that's why he vacated that one unit and the basement is unfinished uh, sorry it's finished and there is a two bedroom in-law suite not a legal unit but it's a it's a in-law suite um the uh, the basement is not that much renovated but it's nice and clean you can rent the main floor with the basement together for you know bigger family or a group of people and lots of parking in the back. Probably you can park three cars, nice, decent deck in the back, newer furnace, newer AC, nice vinyl siding. And this is the basement bedroom, a basement kitchen, small kitchenette, new flooring, 
basement is okay condition like i said you know this basement just they painted and full washroom in the basement basement is okay they haven't updated completely in the basement and this you have a nice um you know coffee room whatever you call it on the main floor and um, main floor new flooring new light fixtures good size living area nice beautifully renovated kitchen brand new nice countertop with the exhaust clean washrooms again updated as well so and the bedrooms are very good size like very spacious you can see here very very spacious even with the two bedrooms there's like a lot more two beds still a lot more space very spacious three bedroom units easy to rent two thousand dollars main floor two thousand dollars upstairs if you're renting the basement together with the main floor maybe two thousand five hundred or even three thousand dollars so you can collect at least five thousand dollars income very conservatively four thousand five hundred for sure so four thousand five hundred dollars is the income and if you do the math here because again always i use this website very very handy the seller is asking this one listed for pretty much whatever they want and uh, if you do the math here if you're buying it as a primary home you need forty thousand down plus whatever the closing cost and your monthly payment three thousand five hundred and if you live on one floor and you're already getting two thousand dollars rent from the upstairs and let's say again another thousand dollars expenses so you you're at four thousand five hundred is your total expenses so four thousand five hundred is your total expenses and you're living in one unit you're already rented two thousand dollars upstairs so you have another two thousand five hundred if you rent the bedrooms one or two bedrooms in the basement another thousand dollars so you're bringing down your expenses to pretty much fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars so technically which is also again a good um house hack um if you're putting 20 percent down your monthly payment is coming down even further to three thousand dollars plus your expenses another thousand dollars you're at four thousand dollars expenses and the income is around four thousand five hundred so your positive five hundred dollars cash flow so great duplex and let me see if i'm if i can see hey joseph hey abba good to see you again here achut hey achut so pretty much um a great cash flowing property again now let's get to a airbnb property this is a nice cute family i just listed a couple of days ago uh, we have an offer date and again i'm, I'm disclosing for my people just to tell what's the expectations again you know the expectations doesn't mean anything sometimes you know the, the seller might get the expectations might not get the expectations it, it, it's it, you know it it's just good to know and you run your numbers you make the decision what makes sense to you and you offer accordingly but let's look at this property as well so hope it's making so far sense if it if it is making sense just give me a thumbs up yes or no if you have any questions let me know okay so now go to the stanley which is the airbnb property this is a cute three bedroom one and a half bathroom house located in a very nice decent rental location it's a central windsor uh, south central uh, more like Remington park nice and decent area uh, pretty close to all amenities the howard is like very um very accessible to like literally everything and um, of course this is not a student area it's more like a family area because if you zoom out the university is here so the property we just talked is here the other property was here which is on the bus route but this one is more like south walkerville and remington which is nice and decent family rental area i, I mean a lot of families live here too um homeowners so this one again from outside it looks very small but if you go see the property inside it's very nice in good size and this one currently the owner is doing airbnb and a good size lot lots of parking in the front um here's the master bedroom good size second bedroom decent size third bedroom also decent size and a half powder room and laundry on suite and a full washroom nice and decent not modern updates not 
outdated completely not in aggregation so here you have the first living this is what as soon as you enter you have a big good sized living area and then you go in all this fun you can buy it has is all the furniture and you can even run with the current company uh, currently it's generating anywhere from 2400 to 2800 dollars per month airbnb all this furniture you can buy has is and nice good size kitchen little modern looking you know not a modern kitchen but modern looking they painted nicely they changed night light pictures fresh paint clean flooring appliances look clean again you got the second living area so this is another living area living come dining you have a good size you know uh, if you want to you can even make it a four bedroom add another washroom as well or someone who likes to make a adu i would i was telling the owner you see where this line you close this off make this a bachelor unit you can easily make this a unit because there is an exit here and there is also another exit on the side where we are seeing it's pretty clean property so either you can run it as is you, or you can live in the house and continue the airbnb with the other two bedrooms live in one bedroom um, again you know if you're someone looking for that or you just want to have a low cost property just for yourself to live in pretty good and if we quickly run the numbers on this one so let's go to the calculator here again so let's say again we'll do the numbers with the seller expectations again you make the price whatever makes sense to you let's put only five percent down the minimum down okay so with the minimum down your monthly payment you're looking around 2260 and plus your property tax is around 150 dollars here 18 1779 so plus insurance another 100 and 100 150 so 300 dollars expense and here let's go back to the calculator so you have expenses um another 300 which is like 2600 now plus let's say another 400 for unexpected things this and that so your total cost of living in this house is three thousand dollars if you put 20 percent down it's 1850 plus another seven seven hundred dollars or you know if if you're renting it as a long-term tenants i would do just um 2200 something plus utilities so it will pay for mortgage property tax and insurance if there is any other cost probably you have to bear from your pocket again this is where making that adu helps because this is where you know single families usually not great with the cash flow but if you're looking at from a family homeowner point of view because it's a nice little nicer neighborhood and the property is in a pretty decent condition and we are looking at a higher interest rates as well right like so it's even with this numbers like if you do long-term rentals it will just break even and any lawn maintenance or any extra things if you're not putting on the tenant if you're bearing those that's your out of your pocket so that means it's a negative cash flow thousand to hundred two hundred dollars but it's a great start at home in my opinion and this is where you change your numbers oh still want 400 but you know what i'm gonna make only 380 this is where my numbers work i'll try for 380 and then you know you make an offer and then you now you see the changes in the monthly payment right so you got my point right do the changes accordingly but this is you know more like a very very good starter home for someone wants to move in okay and uh, before i continue um further let me just uh, answer some questions here bush um how come all houses seem pretty old are they currently old houses any issues with the inspection so great question um yes we are looking at a under average home price prices so windsor average home price is around 570000 so we are looking at below average home price obviously the the property properties are older homes if you want something newer homes like you know we have one that i haven't put in the list because this is more 
um, a family home for someone to move in, but I haven't put it in here for a reason because you know it's a 20 years old home, but that actually we just sold like last night, uh, but you will see still active here. So I'm gonna still show you uh, the active uh, listing here just to I'll share how much it sold for. So this one is a more like a 20, 2002 build, a nice family home, one car garage with a raised ranch, three bedroom on the main floor, one bedroom in the basement, two bathroom. So perfect starter family home. This one we listed for 495, sold for 600. We had eight offers, again, any detached home that is 20 years old, you cannot find under 600,000, not that easily. Very, very rarely properties come up that of this age under 600. And of course, you know, the location is much better than the, all the three neighborhoods we talked so far. Um, almost pretty close to the Rivington Park, a little better than that, because we, again, this is Devonshire Heights. Right here is the Devonshire Mall, right here is the Costco and all the malls and International Airport here. And the new hospital is coming up in this area. So it's like very, very desirable location for the families. So I haven't talked about it here because one, it's old. Two, it doesn't make sense for investor to buy property like this. Um, that's, that's why I'm sharing property that more, makes more sense for investor. And coming to your second question, um, is, are there in, any issues with the inspection? Um, this is where, you know, I haven't done inspection for this property. These are, I'm listing a property, but you as a buyer, you always have right to do inspection. And I always recommend do an inspection, especially when you're buying these older homes. And again, you know, most of my portfolio, all, all older homes, almost like this, my duplexes are very similar to the one I showed. Very, very similar. Uh, older homes. I did inspection, I, I, I'm making changes along the way, you know, some properties I changed AC after a few, one, two years, I changed roof after one, two years, uh, some of them I add, did some fixings to the foundation, some of them, you know, I did some waterproofing, there is always work to it, but the cool thing with the older homes, your price of entry is lower, that means if something happens to your income, you don't have to suffer that much. If let's say the tenants doesn't pay for next two months or three months, again, you know, we all know that the reality, you never know, right? So you're fledging against, you're like literally having that safety net. The income is not that much for you to suffer crazily. Like, you know, if you're a single guy, if you're working any job, you can make $3,000, right? So you can pay that expenses to hold on to the property. So yes, there will be expenses come up. Um, you just in inspect and plan for it, have some safety money. I always keep 10,000 to $20,000 for each property set aside, uh, either access through my line of credits or liquid cash or some stocks that I can sell anytime. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what my take on those homes. Um, here are more questions, Imran. Does the older homes appreciate by time? So great question. And let me, instead of me explaining, let me show you something. So you, we are back onto my screen, right? So let me open up the new site and let me open some older homes. So I'm gonna share, now you got a basic idea. I'm gonna open up the properties that are sold three years ago. Let's do 1,000 to 1,500 and the active as well and the sales and Windsor. Usually most of the older homes are in downtown, central Windsor, downtown, West Windsor. So let's pick those and let's open up. Let's see some price differences. I'm going back in the date. So back to like three years ago, four years ago, what are the prices, right? So just to give you an idea. I got my first duplex on that street, the one I showed you, I got it for 120,000. Yes, 120,000 and the same right now in that area, the properties are selling nothing less than 400,000. So did the properties appreciate? Heck yeah, appreciated crazily. So look at this property, a beautiful duplex, nice looking. So 
six bedroom, two bathroom, and with a second kitchen. Solid one, nice and clean. Sold in 2020 for 375. And I listed very similar property for 640, even if it sells for 600 or even 550, still 200,000 appreciation. So we are talking about good amount of appreciation, like majority of the older homes, they move along with the market. If the market is appreciating, they appreciate along the way. It's not like, you know, older homes appreciate the newer homes, newer homes only appreciate the older homes doesn't. It's not like that. This is also an older home, probably 80, 90 years old home in 2019, sold for 230. Right now, the same property would be like four bedroom, two bathroom would be at least 400,000. So double in price. Actually, the older homes, because they're in the lower price range, they have more chance for better returns. Because now, look at this way. Now, you're not only, um, you, you should not only look at the price, you should look at your returns. So now let's assume that you bought a property, a four, three bedroom house, three years ago for 200,000. And your down payment, let's say you put 20% down, you, which means you put 40,000 down. So now the property today appreciated by 200,000. So which is 400,000. That means your increase in the property value is 200,000. That means your 40,000 made a return of 200,000, which is 500% return on your money. Now let's take another example. At that point in time, the newer homes Let's say the one like I showed the Karebu that sold for 600, the same home, actually, I helped that client buy it. So let me show you the exact history. I helped this client to buy it in, I believe 2019 or 2020. So let's see how much it's appreciated and then we'll talk the numbers. So bear with me here. This is little confusing and ask me any questions you have. Here's the price we got in 2020. We bought this for 450. The property appreciated by 150,000. But now let's do the math on the return. So this one, the down payment was 20% down, which is $90,000. So your $90,000 made a return. Your $90,000 turned into, uh, made a return of 150. If just for the simple numbers, let's say it doubled. So you made 200% returns. Whereas the older home went from 200 to 400, you made 500% returns. There is 200% difference. Just because it's a newer home, your, your expenses, let's talk about that. So there you have a 200,000 expense uh, returns, but let's say you have $20,000 expense to maintain that property over the period. Even if you minus that, you're still 400% returns comparatively 200% versus 400%. So in my experience, actually older homes appreciated, for me, older homes appreciated more. The returns on older homes for me are more than the newer homes. If you get that point, you will take that risk. So for me, I understood that earlier stage. That's why I took the risk. So again, um, a great question. Let me open that question here. Um, Abba, so, but last two years scenario was different with COVID with all the similar trends continuing in the future. So I'm not talking about just the trend from COVID. Before COVID also, I started buying my first property in 2017. Even the market in Ontario been increasing. In Windsor, it's been steadily increasing from 2016, 2015, because that's when Windsor area started to appreciate because that's when the immigrant population or the population in Windsor started to grow. The university started to bring more students and slowly, you know, we started to get this new, new, you know, projects in Windsor, like, you know, the bridge construction. One of the busy uh, inter interconnected cross-border uh, uh, transfers, one of the busy area here. So the job started to increase since then and and also the awareness in the real estate started to increase since then so we've been seeing a steady increase from 2017 2017 26 28 2016 2017 2018 
2019, yes, COVID happens. And that's why we have seen a crazy increase than the normal. But forget about that. This is where I didn't, I, even when I'm presenting the other three properties, I'm not talking about uh, appreciation. There is a reason. I generally don't talk too much about appreciation on my channel. You know why? Because I believe appreciation is like just cream on the top of your ice cream. You already have the ice cream and you know they put that whipping cream on top. Yes, it's a it tastes better, you know, it's it's it looks good. Um, it happens over the period, but that's just a whipping cream. That's you know, it could anything could happen in the short term for the prices. But what is guaranteed, the ice cream is the mortgage paid down every month by your tenants is guaranteed. That even if you do the math on that. If you take a property and you buy and sit on it for the next 10 years, just the mortgage paid out, you know, 25 years amortization for the next 10 years, probably you're down by one third of the mortgage payments. So if you do your returns based on your investment, you will be looking at uh, numbers around. I made a reel about this a while ago. Very conservative, your returns are somewhere from 10% to 13%, almost better than the uh, average those index funds or whatever you know more than that returns that's guaranteed and on top of it with the amount of demand that is growing in canada of course the interest rates there of course the interest rates you know un unfortunate situations or like you know unexpected situations are there but that's not going to be forever you know it might be one two three years but it has to continue like because we have seen in any country real estate is just a product like your shirt or pant, you know, like whatever your cost um, consumer goods, what happens to those good prices? You know, what was this t-shirt cost 20 years ago, 30 years ago? What is it now? Is it same? Did it double, triple four times, right? Why? Because the inflation. So over the period, yes, the real estate will appreciate, but we are not even considering that as a, that's why like I don't talk too much about the appreciation and that we've been seeing steadily in Windsor like with the amount of people coming in with the amount of jobs getting created you know it will happen but that's just a cream on the top what's happening to your rent you're you're renting a place right like you know I, I've been I rented for five years when I'm new to the country when I don't know about this you know first time home buyers and this and that I when I when I didn't know I was renting my rent was around like 12 1300 at that time if I would have bought the property, at that time, my mortgage was around the same, maybe another $500 more. But my rent, I took the money and just throw it away. Gone. The rent, I cannot claim anything. I, I cannot do anything. It's gone. Whereas the mortgage, the monthly payments that I'm paying for my house, actually paying down my mortgage. And if I get lucky with the appreciation, that's an extra you know, cream on the top. So that's what I'm talking about. Again, Hope it makes sense. This is where everyone have different opinions. Everyone have different. Feel free to share your thoughts, your opinions. I'm happy to hear. So um, going back to our discussions here, um, if someone is concerned about older homes, I have another great property here, great project. Especially this is a great one for someone. I don't want to have tenant. I don't want to have a mortgage. I don't want to, you know, or maybe, you know, you're in a position like you're on work permit. You're on a work permit for next one year. You know that you're going to get it in next one or two years. Then I have a pre-construction project, a condo project. Uh, it's in a, the downtown area, literally right opposite to the hospital. Um, it's on a, a Goyo and uh, every intersection. I'll show you the location. Yeah, it's a location that is like where always there will be renters because it's literally right opposite to the the hospital let me go back on the map here so when i'm referring to downtown area this is where the downtown is so this all it right here this pocket is the downtown and this one is right here goyo and here we go. So let's drop a pin. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So right here is the hospital. 
and right here is the property. This lot you see here, this is the empty land here, this part, this is where the building is gonna come. And this is like very accessible for everything. First of all, the hospital. Second of all, there is the St. Clair College here and university is right here. And the walker will all the best uh, uh, restaurants and all are on the Erie Street right here. And all the walker will all the happening things are right here. So it's really central location. And uh, this project is, is very interesting. Um, first of all, you don't have to close now. That means you don't have to qualify for a mortgage now. And you don't have to have full 20% down right now. If you're an investor and you want to invest, but you don't want to, you don't have full money right now, you already own a property and you know, or you don't like to have tenants, then it's a thousand square feet actually. So if for Toronto people, thousand ten square feet, two bedroom, two bath, two bedroom, two bath condo. So it's like $500 per square feet. In Toronto, I think, you know, very, very, very minimum is like $1,200 per square feet condos. Whereas here, you're getting almost like less than half um, the price that you're in Toronto. Um, even if it appreciate from $500 per square feet to 600, your property price goes from 500 to $600. So these are the properties where you're like, you will get brand new property and you're banking on the appreciation. If the property appreciate in two years, if it goes from 500 to 600, you literally made money without even closing the deal, without even having the mortgage. Or some people, what they do, they have a, a free assignment. So some people, they don't want to even close it. They just sell the contract. If they make 50,000, you know, they put down payment is like 15%. You pay it in the next one and a half year in phases, like 15,000 divided by like, um, it's, it's like a structure that is like extended structure that uh, goes by every quarter every quarter you pay like six thousand six hundred um the total down payment is like seventy five thousand adding up it's not you're paying it once it's like uh, first you pay twenty thousand upon offer acceptance and from there onwards every three months you pay six thousand six hundred until the total down payment becomes seventy five thousand and remaining at the closing and the closing has of now tentatively the builder said in two years from now but most likely this kind of projects go for uh, two and a half three years and right now we have access to 10 units exclusively uh, for win city so if someone is interested in this kind of project just dm pre-construction and again i'm going to take another pause just to you know hear out your questions so this project is is more like hands off you don't have to do anything and even if at that point after two years down the road you decided to close on the property if you want to quickly look at the numbers it still makes sense because for 500000 your mortgage because by now you already put you're already prepared with 20% down and your mortgage is around 2300 so this property can easily rent for 2200 2300 has for the current rents because it's a brand new thousand square feet with a lot of luxury amen amenities like it comes with everything like uh luxury features like uh granite countertops stainless steel appliances everything included in the price and also parking there's like first uh, first come first serve like first 37 parkings are free and on top of it um every parking is like five thousand dollars so whoever buys it first will get the parking for free um so that you're on a brand new property, you're close to break even, not like probably like with the condo fees, the condo fees is around uh, $220 approximately. Um, that's going to be like the starting condo fees. Again, you know, it might go up over the period. So your monthly expenses are condo fees, property tax, insurance, and pretty much just everything tenants pay for themselves. So you have like $2,500, $600. And this kind of condos, um, if the condos allow right now, there is no restrictions. If you do a short-term rentals, it can make actually more than $2,500 to $3,000. Uh, if you rent for just like maybe a, as a luxury, um, incl all-inclusive uh, um, furnished unit, probably you can get $2,500, $2,600 where you can break even as well. 
so on a brand, brand new and again this is we are talking about two to three years down the road after closing makes sense and i'll be talking about one more project here um and then maybe you know i'll just uh, open for, for your questions so we got two more multi-families actually another house hacking duplex very cute one 1043 lewis so i'll quickly touch on that i'm not going to go details but um i'll just quickly show the property very cute um and a very nice neighborhood the same little italy neighborhood very very nice restaurants right here this is a very cute prop pocket a um, lot of tenants love the area within walking distance to everything so this one the main floor is two bedroom plus then that can easily rent for 1700 1800 and upstairs is a good size one bedroom with a balcony one bedroom uh, living area kitchen and nicely updated uh, house with a nice brick and parking in the back very clean nice new flooring freshly painted new kitchen new washrooms nice and clean modern updates so this one can easily rent for like upstairs another 1400 1500 so you can make at least um, $3,300, $3,200 rent. And this one, you can get it for around $450. Uh, that's the seller expectations, but again, um, the price can change depending on how many offers they're going to have. As of now, it's listed for $350. So again, um, if you want to know more details or if you want to come down, check it out. Um, my team is more than happy to help you to you know analyze more, get an inspection done, do more due diligence. I'm not saying, you know, buy. All I'm saying, you know, always analyze the property, do more due diligence. If it all meet your requirements, then make the next move. Until then, just hunt. And having options, doing this kind of analysis will help you because, you know, now you're getting into my mind how I analyze when I'm buying a property. And now moving on to the last the final two properties that are multifamilies. You know, those who are multifamily investors. We have a nice turnkey investments. Actually, one is a turnkey, one is a value adding property. So the fourplex, let's start with the fourplex. This is a shepherd. So it's a solid full brick property, uh, four or five parkings in the back. One unit is nice, clean, updated, not completely updated, but nice and decent, just freshly painted, made it ready to move in, rent out. Um, this one is all four units, two bedroom, two bathroom. All four units and uh, one unit is vacant the other three units are rented but they're on low rent this is where opportunity comes in hey what can you get in Toronto for this price but this building if you mm, slowly you know in next one year two years you work on the tenants you give cash for key do whatever it takes to rent all the units for market rents 14 1500 easy you're gonna make like six thousand dollars rent on a fourplex so you'll be around like thousand dollars cash flow and again a multi-family building and a very good location uh walkerville area like border of walkerville area pretty much like in the little yeah little um, italy area where i just showed it's pretty much in that area a nice decent family rentals area walk in between walkerville in between south central it's right on the border there pretty clean area again this is another investment. Again, to, I'm not going more deep into the income expenses and all. If you're interested, just DM on Instagram. I'll send you full details with a video tour, with the information, this and that, like all the details that you need in order to uh, analyze the property more. And we have another property that is five units. This is almost a turnkey property. Um, it's currently like one unit is uh, vacant. All the four units are rented. And rented for market rents except one unit all the three are rented for market rents like 1400 1500 and all units are pretty much updated like new flooring fairly newer kitchens freshly painted nice decent clean units and this one listed for 925 and of course this multifamilies they don't have any offer dates pretty much like whatever the best the seller is getting they're going to look at the offers they're open you know, they're open to negotiate as well so if you want to know more details just dm we can discuss more 
Okay, so let's take on more questions here. Rana, can I buy on work permit? Both me and my wife are on work permit. So Rana, and, uh, yes, you can buy on work permit, but if, you, if you're closing now, you have to pay 25% Ontario, the foreign buyer tax. There is a tax for uh, if for who are buying in Ontario, 25%. Unfortunately, that's the reality. Um, but if you want to avoid that, if you're um, probably, you know, you will get your um, PR in the next one, two years, then looking at those pre-construction projects makes sense because now instead of you holding your money in your hand, you're investing into something that, you know, we all know that the market cycle we are in pretty much like we are in a kind of a downtown downturn market and this market may exist exist for next one year two years but it will eventually has to come up and you know we all know what goes up comes down what comes down goes up but over the period of five years ten years it's always like upward direction but in the short term periods you know we have seen in 2009 for one one and a half year it was downturn in a during covid time the first one month it was a downturn in 2001 or something the dot com bubble same thing downturn for like few months or a year or so so the longest one i think last around three years let's say even now if it lasts for three years it has to come up at some point but now you're saving up your down payment yeah, and you don't have to qualify for any mortgage, and you can avoid that foreign buyer tax if you get your uh, if you get your PR by the closing time. Hope that makes sense. So that's your option, unless if you have money. You know, I know some clients who bought property where they put. Uh, you can still qualify for five or ten percent down, but you have to put extra twenty five percent tax to the government if you are buying a property now. So, Run, uh, what is your opinion on realtor misleading by hiding all the factual factual expenses and projecting as cash flow? By 20% down, if it makes a couple of bucks, it's is it called investment? Where is the returns for investment? So, first of all, you know, realtors will share whatever the sellers give. Um, and some realtors go a little extensive and share more details. You know, for example, we were calculating just now for those the properties not all the expenses on the mls i don't put all the expenses because you know seller says no i don't want you to put this because you know this can vary for example um the the utilities can vary you can you know some owners if it's vacant property they put all inclusive some owners say plus utilities so things can vary that's why sellers don't give and same thing with insurance that can vary based on your situation if you had any claims in the past, you know, if you, how old you are and all those things. So that's why like most of the realtors, what they do, they just give approximate numbers. And this is where we as investors, we have to come in and you have to do your due diligence. You have to analyze your numbers, understand what makes sense, how much cash flow it makes. And number one, number two, if it's making positive cash flow of few bucks, even if it's making dollar, it's still a better investment than the negative cash flow property. Think about it. Your, in, your, in, your expense is getting paid by your tenants, which is, <coughs> excuse me. Which is way better than you paying from your pocket, right? I do have some properties that I, um, I have like break even. I do have some properties actually negative cash flow. If you have seen my Calgary property, I have negative cash flow. Am I still holding on to it? Yes. Is it a good investment? I don't know it, but I'm positive. You know, maybe you know. Right now we are in a market where unfortunately I cannot sell because it's negative, and um, this is why I focus on active income. This is why I make sure I have income coming in so I can hold on to the property. When the market turns to be good, when I have good returns, I will sell it at that point. So that's what my opinion on the negative cash flow. Uh, that's what my thoughts are. And again, this is where you have to become smarter with your investment. If the current expenses and current income is not making sense, is there anything else you can do? Look at from a creative side of it. 
you know, this is where you have to build your network. This is where you have to build your knowledge so you can look through what normal people cannot see. Can you add a legal unit? Can you add another bedroom? Can you add another washroom, increase the rent? Can you do something else? Can you improve any of the features to increase your income? Or can you get onto a, you know, a, a different um, a style of uh, the renting? Okay. So the list goes on and on. So, and where is the returns? Like, that's another question for you. It's like, you know, if you're only breaking even, if you're only breaking even, there's still returns. You know, for, don't forget your returns in real estate, there is multiple layers of returns, majorly three layers. Number one is your cash flow that you see every day. Let's say you don't have cash flow. You bought a 500,000 property, your monthly expenses are $3,000 and your income is $3,000. So you don't have cash flow. But that doesn't mean that you don't have returns because your returns, one is cash flow. The second one is mortgage pay down. Don't forget who is paying your mortgage down. What would be the mortgage pay down 10 years down the road? If the mortgage paid down in 10 years is 100,000, is that your return or not? Because you put 100,000 onto the deal and you, your tenants paid your mortgage by 100,000 down in next 10 years. Now you're, that's your returns. So that's the second layer. And the third layer is the appreciation. You know, like we were talking all this time, the appreciation is also another layer of uh, returns because, you know, appreciation happens over the period. And there's also fourth layer, which is force appreciation. If you're buying an older property that is in a rough shape or, you know, uh, in, a, in a not so good condition or having some challenges, that's why you got the property for a lower price. You know, for example, um, let's say this the first duplex set that I showed, um, there is some, you know, improvements you can make on that property. Um, there is nice, clean duplexes. They're selling even for 550, a little bit more nicer, a little bit more, you know, well-maintained compared to this one. So that means there is 100,000 spread. If you invest 30, 40,000, and if your property appreciate by another 40, 50,000, that's also returns, force appreciation, value adding opportunity. Or if you add another unit to it, uh, you know, I don't know what you, whatever you look into, whatever the creative ways you appreciate forcefully the property value, that's also a returns. So you have this four different type of appreciate um, returns. So return is not just based off of cash flow. That's what I'm trying to uh, convey here. Hope it makes sense. If you still have questions, let me know in the comments below. And guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you got some information that is helpful, give me a thumbs up and make sure, you know, uh, if you haven't still subscribed to the channel, subscribe and share it with your friends and make sure to follow me on Instagram. We have a lot of things always. I post um, different things. And also, by the way, those who don't know, those who are not coming aware, we have an event going on tomorrow. I'm investing. I'm hosting a, a investor meetup, a investor meetup just it's like a three hours meetup, meet and greet, get to know. You know, I would love to see your faces and also enjoy some nice uh, dinner. Um, it's at an Indian restaurant. Um, if you're interested to come down, I have gone to my Instagram, check my name, full name, Aditya Kumar Soma. I'll put the Instagram handle. It's on the bio. The link is on the bio. It's like, uh, you know, probably like $50 fees just to cover the cost. Uh, also, there is 40% discount if you put, uh, there's a coupon code, I'll, I'll DM me, I will we'll send you the coupon code 40% discount even if you don't want to pay that 50, 50, $50. Uh, just a meet and greet, just a meet and greet. And also we have a special guest, uh, two guests. One is a mortgage guy who is crushing it, you know, who is helping all our clients, um, majority of our clients to get mortgages. Uh, and, you know, just to, he'll, he'll be sharing some um, different uh, ways how you can um, get mortgages and also share some of his story you know he was on my channel just last week uh, the audi s s s5 guy uh, his name is also Aditya. and also we have a uh, my other good friend whose video i just posted like a, a week ago who bought like 300 rental units just immigrant like us um, i'm assuming half of your immigrants i'm an immigrant uh, to this country. This guy came just five years ago, five years ago. That's it. And last two and a half years, he went from zero units to owning 300 plus rental units. He purchased buildings. 
and some of his create creative strategies are insane he go by and buy this like 60 unit building with a crazy negotiation i have the video coming up i think it might be posted already or it's, the video is coming up like you know make sure to check out and this guy in person coming in you will be able to network with people like that and a lot of our sub trades that you, you know we use contractors project property managers this and that and different guys will be coming as well so come meet our meet the people get to know the city get to know the people ask more questions get to you know uh, ask more questions about different things that you were you know uh, going through learn and come see me i would love to see your face rosie is coming hey rosie awesome imran coming glad to good to see you i'm looking forward to see you guys so yeah i think it's already 8 i got to jump out today golfing was like very interesting my hands were hurting i did for the first time right like the swings are all like crazy oh super bad pain so i got to take some rest today um but yeah it's a wonderful wonderful uh, life here you know glad come with your, your questions to the networking event as well and also we have a lot more other off market deals coming in if anyone you know looking curious interested just dm me um, yeah, any uh, if you want to get access to those off market deals just dm me like off market deal on instagram yeah, you know we'll put you in our database and we'll send you joseph i missed your question sorry brother how did i miss you not intentionally okay let me go back i'll take another 2 minutes answer your question uh, can you use line of credit as a down payment so generally if it's again there are two different type of line of credits one secure line of credit secure line of credit usually yes you can use it secure line of credit is the line of credit that is attached to your homes usually for any asset those are secure line of credits unsecure is like they don't have any lien on anything else it's just a you based on your income they gave you a line of credit so usually you cannot use your unsecured line of credit banks don't allow so you got to be little creative this is what i did again this is not a professional advice i'm just a random guy on youtube just sharing their thoughts sharing their journey okay disclaimer there uh, what i did in the past like you know i got my second property um where uh, three months before i started um, taking some money from my friend um he had a line of credit i took money from his account put it in my account for i let it stay for like 2 3 months uh, because the banks want to see like 2 or 3 months statements so i put that in my money in my account and i had unsecured line of credit at that time and i told him i'm going to pay him after the closing with the interest whatever you know interest i agree and i took the prop money it was sitting on my account i didn't touch my unsecured line of credit i closed the deal and i went and after the closing is done no one is going to care if you're paying the uh, mortgage if you're if you stop paying probably they'll care but uh, you know uh, you got to think a little creatively you cannot just go by the books all the time you got to think a little creatively again you know make sure you're not taking you know stupid risks calculated risk make sure you know you have to contingency plans for everything hope it makes sense and sorry i think rana i missed your question also so is it 25% tax on in only in ontario or other provinces too um so i'm feeling windsor is the place to be so <clears throat> windsor is part of ontario uh, yes it's on, it's in ontario and i believe in in bc as well there are some provinces where there is no uh, tax foreign buyer tax like if you are if you are on work permit you can still buy um but mostly in ontario as far as my knowledge just look into you know limit on online as far as i'm aware uh, not every province have that especially if you're here you're not a foreign buyer because they just made a amendment to the foreign buyers like if you're on work permit you're not a foreign they, you don't come under that foreign buyer ban because before they even put a ban on the foreigners like you cannot even buy a residential property that was out so now that's not the case so look into other provinces if you, you know, if you don't have that option okay awesome awesome glad to hear guys thank you so much for joining me live and um, looking forward to see you all at the event tomorrow um, you can find the link on the bio and any properties that you saw today or any other projects the properties you are interested in you know my team is here to help you guys to invest make the decisions right again you know we work for you we make sure you know you you find the right property you make sure you analyze all the things and you know we make sure you know you make good returns on those properties and we have all the team here you know a lot of uh, out of town people ask me like you know that's why i i host this meetups once in a while 
ask all my guys come down guys and girls sorry don't be <laughs> don't jump on me on that um to come down so that way you can meet connect okay with that signing off have a good night guys take care